There's probably some lump somewhere in my gray mask which says, when I get up in the morning, paint, because that's all I've ever done. Basically, it's sort of a portrait of my long gone dad. I set it up like a work table. And he used to have these textiles because he used to work for these textile companies and design fabrics for them, those Indonesian fabrics. So it has a saro on it. It has a, he did watercolors very much like I do. So I painted a pieces of stretched watercolor paper on it. And on top of that is one of the preliminary studies for a Bible illustration, which I have. Recently, he, Hank Pander was one of four artists selected for a public art commission that had him going on ride-alongs with the fire department. So when there's an accident or some sick person or a fire or whatever, and the circumstances allow it, I stand in a corner and I take one of these pencils out of my pocket, open up the sketchbook like this, and just start drawing the scene, whatever it is. These drawings have to happen really immediate, very fast, very spontaneous. Oftentimes when there's great chaos and people are running around and people standing in front of me. The very first call I went on, we went to this little house in East Portland and ran up the stairs and I just sort of followed them. I was wearing sort of a dark shirt also and I was sort of camouflaged a little bit. I carried my backpack. And she walked into this sort of room, with sort of messy and chaotic, and there was a kid out there and some man. And right in the middle of the floor was this nude man lying there. And, uh, and for all I knew, he was dead. And uh, I just, there was a bed, piece of bed sticking out there, and I put my sketchbook on this piece of bed and started drawing. They all wear rubber gloves, so there's all these white hands or blue hands or purple hands. Oftentimes these guys are really big, they're all sort of indigo in their dark suits, and so there has this sort of color element to it, and it has this great contrast. Oftentimes with these extremely frail people and these big men, you know, and there's the big letters on them. They all reach out into this setting, and the setting is powerful and, and sad and, and, and gripping. And there's all these white hands reaching out to help and at the same time having this barrier. So they touch, but they don't really touch because there is this barrier. And that makes it also sort of ironic and partly there and partly not there. These images are contemporary images, but they have this sort of classical, timeless uh, aspect to it, which, which you will see in paintings throughout the history of art. I can go back and refer to this scene in my journal and it has a really fairly sharp sort of visual description of what actually took place, what the call was, what it looked like, how the color was, how the light fell on it, uh, the intrigue behind it. I looked at the dead woman, Cynthia, what's her name, and took off my cap. She looked too young, too poor, too sad, lying there with her breasts exposed, her yellow bloated belly, the white tag on her chest, the green mouthpiece, the white tape on her forehead, her eyes closed now, motionless on the grimy brown carpet. These drawings you can, they're sort of meditative. You can sit with a drawing like this and for a long time just go through each little part and give it form. When I make these drawings, I also have in the back of my mind, maybe eventually it'd be a painting, but I don't commit myself to any kind of color or anything, but just sort of I work myself through all these various details of, of uh, what a drawing or what a painting like that would look like as I do that. It gets further and further removed from the real moment out there and it becomes really there's much more of this metaphor about the human condition and people actually trying to help each other. What's the dimension on this one? One of Pander's sons, Jakob Pander, also an artist, recently made a documentary film about his father. 
It began as a chronicle of creating a still life. Yeah. What I'd started doing is just kind of looking for a particular painting that might be an interesting painting that might have a kind of a universal quality to it to decide to document. Soon, the film, titled Painted Life, evolved into much more. Finally, I was like, well, maybe we should sit down and do an interview and start talking about this process. And as we got into talking about it, um, you know, it really led back to his father and his relationship with his father and his experience growing up and painting in the landscape in Holland. So that just kind of opened up a whole other level to the film, which I wasn't really expecting. Each object in there has some kind of meaning to me, you know. Not only that, it's sort of my world. And this is my world, this is my studio, this is my family, this is my heritage. These are things I own and these are the things, even though they may have no meaning to somebody else, an old book, a broken piece of pottery or whatever, but it has deep meaning to me and I give things which, try to give things which seem apparently meaningless, seem ruins or broken pieces or dying people or things which are like uh, dispensable in a way, you know, whether it's an old poor junkie who is basically going to be burnt or it is some thing which is, uh, you know, like have no value, I, at least for the moment or even some old skeleton coming out of the desert. And I suspend the skeleton from the ceiling and there it's Maybe awkwardly, maybe terrifyingly, but there it walks once and maybe it lives once more and it gives something which just sort of decays and all that. Just some meaning, some sort of purpose by making a painting out of it.